Dr. Swachla, Scientific Director with Ziva Fertility Centers. Today, I'm going to explain about non-obstructive azoospermia. So, to begin with, azoospermia is the lack of sperm in an ejaculate, in a semen sample. And uh, azoospermia can be broadly divided into two types, obstructive and non-obstructive. Obstructive is where there is an obstruction in the male reproductive tract and uh, due to which sperm production is happening, but sperms are not generated outside. So this is a common cause of concern in male infertility. But non-obstructive azoospermia is also very common. About 70% of azoospermic men have azoospermia due to non-obstruction. So what is non-obstruction? It's very easy to understand isn't it when there is no blockage it is called as non-obstruction and therefore non-obstructive azoospermia so in these cases it is the uh, absence of sperms in the semen because there is no generation of sperms in the testis in obstructive azoospermia there is sperm generation but it's not being able to be transported outside but in uh, non-obstructive azoospermia there is no generation of sperm itself in testicular area so we'll try to look at the causes and see if there are any treatment options the causes could be many like i said 70 percent of azoospermic men have azoospermia due to non-obstructive azoospermia so let's begin with the causes it could be genetic and when i say genetic it means that when the male patient was in the form of an embryo and development was happening some mutation over there some problem over there resulted in poor generation of cells that can result in sperm production so this is genetic reason next we come to hormonal imbalances when there is a hormonal imbalances in the hormones that are required for sperm production also this can happen so the hypothalamus Pituitary and gonadal axis is very critical. Hypothalamus and pituitary are located in the brain and these two along with the gonads that is the testis act as an axis. These three have to produce hormones normally whereby sperms are produced. So any imbalance in the hormones that are produced by these can lead to no generation of sperms. So I was talking about genetic issues and I went back to the time when you were an embryo. But there are then genetic issues that can happen after the embryo is formed and uh, the chromosomes are not distributed properly. There are some disorders such as Klinefelter syndrome where there could be a problem with sperm generation because of lack of cells that can result in sperms. So this is a very common genetic disorder that leads to azoospermia. Then we need to look at testicular issues. Issues such as uh, increased temperature uh, in the testis, trauma or infections of the testicular area can also lead to azoospermia, not just azoospermia but non-obstructive azoospermia. If there was a childhood rise in temperature due to mumps or uh, meningitis also, there could uh, be a problem of non-obstructive azoospermia. One of the side effects of chemotherapy is lack of spermatogenesis. Now this spermatogenesis or sperm production comes from specific cells that form sperms during stages of development. Now in chemotherapy, these cells which can eventually produce mature sperms are destroyed due to the type of procedure that it is chemotherapy. Now life is more important than generation of sperms, therefore patients prefer chemotherapy over uh, saving sperms but you have to understand if sperms are being produced and you have time before chemotherapy you must freeze a few samples before you start your chemotherapy procedure then there is substance abuse and by that i mean anabolic steroids or uh, some drugs that cause uh, the reduction of hair fall all these can also re result in a non-obstructive azoospermia so you need to understand what the root cause is where the problem lies and then treatment is given so what are the treatment options is it possible to get pregnant with azoospermia most of the times if the drug usage or the medications that you're on is causing non-obstructive azoospermia then withdrawal of these medications can help in regeneration of spermatogenesis if the pituitary hypothalamus gonadal axis hormonal imbalance is present then some hormone therapy can also result in sperm generation therefore introduction of hormone therapy can help in regeneration of sperms proper bmi body mass index maintenance good exercise a healthy diet can also help in regeneration of sperm so what you need to understand is once you've been put on hormone therapy and there are, there are uh, sperms being produced in the testis then you are eligible for ivf 
uh, the sperms may not go back to what uh, they should ideally be in terms of millions of sperms but even if few are present then you could be eligible for IVF and within IVF a procedure called as ICSI intracytoplasmic sperm injection. Now this is confirmed by a procedure called uh, surgical uh, extraction of sperms. Within the testis the sperms are extracted and used for, for generation of embryos which are then transferred and may result in a live healthy pregnancy. So there are options available. We need to understand the underlying cause. Based on that, suggestions can be made and treatment can be offered. If you wish to understand more about this, please feel free to contact us. Thank you. A lot of effort has gone into making this video. Please like and subscribe us. Thank you.